I haven't looked at all before, actually. Um, should I look on YouTube? Maybe I should look at the YouTube. How how to pro po how to program how to program hey this yeah okay let's do it this is like in today's video i just want to show you this is not what how, i wanted how but <laughs> the uh most asked question on my channel is how do i learn programming how do i get started how do i do this how do i do this i thought I, i'd just show you how I learned programming so that if like if you if you don't know anything about computers computer science you'll actually have an understanding by the end of this video I'm a little sick right now I don't know if you can tell but we gotta drink some alcohol this one is called Buckley's we're gonna see how well my brain can operate with this is <laughs> yep, no, I could I could see the programming video. advice right away here all you need to know wait can I freeze frame that? Did I see that? Did, did I see this correctly? Wait, I've gone back to the booze. This one is called. Let me. Buckley's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna see how well my brain can operate with sneeze. I went yeah, back too far. It's not gonna be a good video. Yes. Java. Why? Why Java? Um. Yeah, why? All you need to know is that we have variables, we have conditional statements to do why? different things based on these variables, we have functions, we have the ASCII table to represent characters with numbers, and we have arrays, which can store multiple variables. So we can reuse this one object to store data about every family. We can create individual... Of I'm loving how... <laughs> I, I, I get this vibe. I'm loving how this is basically going to mean nothing unless you are like already like pro tier a husband and a wife this is the thing is that you can put objects inside of other objects once you feel comfortable with using data structures this is where your coding life gets interesting in the c language you got to do everything yourself bud whoops let's get a basic program how did we get firstly not true secondly how did we get from java to see you do everything yourself going here it's something like gcc test.c by the I mean, way take into account like their last like description of stuff allocate memory with the size of in times three we've created a pointer if we want to access was, was that clatter like in the video or was it like my my kitchen my cat's like destroying stuff this block, all we know. have to do is we have to say I pointer don't know. plus one or pointer plus two, pointer plus three. Dereference. I've got to get on and look for courses two. too, but this and this are the exact same thing. Num two to num plus two. Every Does other this guy have just like a really weird champ? I didn't even need to rewind it. This this dude has some weird champ like C styling right here. Like, I've used this notation, but... Ugh. I just, like... I just, like, saw that they, like... Don't put spaces before these. Jeez. Okay, I don't trust anything in this video now. On top of this. So once you understand how C works, you can do everything. I never read books, yo. If you guys are asking me for a book, this is the only book I can recommend. <laughs> Here's a list structure which contains a function pointer, a pointer to a function. So it's kind of the same as an object in Java. We have uh, variables and we have functions. It's at a lower level now. Insert back. Oh yeah, and then I had to do, look, if list head equals null, if list head equals null. In C, strings do not exist. You create an array of characters and we're gonna call it string. Dude, that's- Size of char times 10. Dude, that's the what strings are everywhere. Is a backslash zero, right? I don't have like my like can I put my notepad on this screen or something? Do I have it in like a
I need like a notepad because I can't like all my other shit has like NDA stuff in it but can I just add like where's my window where's my window capture notepad dude what really it is here it is here okay I can do this is it readable though like like you can still do like Wait, what are we doing? Char. Like, that still, like, works in C. I, I don't know what this garbage is about, like, having to, like, manually allocate it, like, character by character. Like, I don't, I don't get what they're doing there. And then they just, like, have a format string like, straight after it to, like, totally debunk the shit they're doing. I don't know. Person's confusing me. It's confusing. Ah, look. Hello. It's there. Nobody actually uh, sets their strings like this. In oh, C okay. STR, CTY. You just type in hello. And it does the same thing. Okay. Look at that. Hello. Why, why did you... Why, why, why would you go to that effort of... What... You have Java. Java is pretty high level. You I suppose to be fair. You understand. What are we up to in this video? Only two and a half minutes in. Do they have this? How much is that? That's a significant bottle. Did they have the entire bottle? Did he like drink the entire bottle before doing this video? Where are we up to? The cool bit. I think we're up to assemble. Ah, the cool well, part. There. Nobody actually uh, sets their strings like this in C. S T R C T Y. You just type in hello. Oh jeez. And geez. it does the same thing. Okay. Luna. Luna. Get down, Luna. Luna. Yeah. Took me threatening to get up. Look at that. Hello. You have Java. Java is pretty high level. You break it down to C. You understand how C works. And then now you gotta do write assembly. Like assembly can run on a assembler. Yeah, I'm gonna code this in, assembly. in that computer See science. If I remember exactly Hang on, they did. That. They did Java. It. I love it. I just realized, in order to understand this, we need to understand hexadecimal. So we have 16 numbers in hexadecimal between zero and 15. Is so this F actually equals? I don't know if I can recognize 6800 like by sight, but is this actually 6800? <laughs> Oh, actually, no, it might well be. It didn't look like... It didn't look like it right away. I think, I actually, no, I, I trust that this is, like, Motorola. You need to understand hexadecimal. So we have 16 numbers in hexadecimal between 0 and 15. So F equals 15. It makes it easier for programmers Wait. to look at an Other F people have done the same thing? One, 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 one. Look up binary to hexadecimal. Is this a thing? This is our memory. We put 15 into byte. What? If I go into YouTube, right? I type in my whole computer... This is an actual... Wait! Oh! Wait, this guy has like... Do, do, do I need to do one of these too? <laughs> my whole computer... Do I have to do one of these? Is this the whole thing that I did? My whole computer... What? This one, two, three, four... Yeah, this is original. These are all like... So why is this lower rated? Yeah, yeah, these are like... Oh, no, it's like... I have to do one of these. 
I feel like I actually have to do one of these now. Okay. Jesus. 9,000, so you can see 0F. And you can look at 6, which is in 9,001. Uh, this is the... Have placed it this is there. maybe... Check I... the stack pointer. And... For reference, I'm biased because I've taught discrete maths before, but like that is like the single worst description of hexadecimal I think I've ever heard. Like mm. this includes from people who don't know what it is. Yes, awesome. So we've put 15 onto the stack. We've put six onto the stack. When when we execute jump to subroutine, it's going to push the address of the next instruction. So if we look on the left here, 8,012, that's gonna fill these Fs right here. Hey, bud. I want to learn Motorola now, actually. This is the um, I know ARM pretty well. Equivalent of I was dumb learning dumb Cell. Motion. Pushing but X onto the stack, pushing Y onto the stack. This never the really did much Motorola stuff. The <laughs> did a lot of but x86. You don't have to do that because you just call the function. In order to access the variables in memory, we could just put X here. But the whole point is when you call a function, it creates a local variable. So in order to create a local variable, that's the equivalent of pushing something onto the stack. That's why we have to prepare Maybe. them, call a function, Maybe. To get into the function, Sometimes. move the value of x into a register, add y onto b0, return from the function, save it to memory, Oh my god, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go into that. I had a massive rant about hex and decimal stuff yesterday. I'm going to read what I wrote, and you guys may not understand it, but I think it is hilarious, okay? How does a computer do addition? That's your next question of low level. Engineers discovered that they can make an adder circuit super fast. They practically perfected the adder circuit. They obviously want to reuse the circuit for as many operations as possible. A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. So how do we represent B in a negative form? All you do is flip all... Did I say this wrong? Or did I hear it wrong? Let's go back. Wait, because I like... Actually perfected the adder circuit. Yeah, the adder... Ad 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 discovered that... Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read what I wrote, and you guys may not understand it, but I think it is hilarious, okay? How does a computer do addition? That's your next question of low level. Engineer... You said addition! It means subtraction, right? Subtraction. This is subtraction, yes. Engineers discovered that they can make an adder circuit super fast. They practically perfected the adder circuit. They obviously want to reuse the circuit for as many operations as possible. Adder. 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 A minus B is the same as A plus negative B. So how do we represent B in a negative form? All you do is flip all the bits and add one. <laughs> Some mathematicians discovered this and they figured out, holy shit, this is going to revolutionize the whole world. Did they? How was two's complement discovered? I want the origin story, goddammit. I want the... I have the origin of that. Origin of two's complement. I want the origin story. I want to know how... Hey, here we go. Give me that. Give me the origin story. Uh, give me the origin story. Wait. Oh yeah, here we go. <clears throat> how, how, how did von Neumann discover his complement? Was von Neumann aggressive? Wait, dude. On a 
an occasional heavy drinker, Von Neumann was aggressive and reckless, was an aggressive and reckless driver, supposedly totaling a car every year or so. His colleagues found it disconcerting that upon entering an office where a pretty secretary worked, Von Neumann habitually... Okay. Wait, what? Wait, what? No. What? Is this true? Do you know what? Like, the, the, like the, 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 the Von Neumann architecture and stuff like I'd seen before. Like, what? I had... I assume this is like like non consensual stuff too. Like I've seen the movie Secretary. There are like there are like legitimate okay times for stuff, but like can I look for aggressive. Here we go. Are there sources for this? Von Newman Corner. I had no idea. I've, I've discovered this whole other side of John Von Newman. Von Neumann used his phenomenal memory to compile an immense library of jokes which he used to liven up a conversation. This is... This is a bizarre statement to just put in there and leave it that. Jesus. Go and find out more stuff about John von Newman now. He sounds kind of like a complete asshat. I also didn't find out the proper origin story of the two's compliments, so that's ten sucked. plus negative six. B was one one zero two's compliment plus one, so six in its two's complement form is zero one zero. Okay, we're gonna add these two zero carry the one. Why one, are we doing like one? Whenever a number starts with one, that DM means tutorials it is in negative. We need to convert it back out of an eight-minute video, and we end up with zero one zero zero. Also, zero. might I point out? I mean, where did you do your course? Like when we did all the Latrobe stuff, um, this sort of DM was done like right back at the start, at like where he was talking about Java. Like we did the discrete maths like right in line with like intro programming maybe they did this after i don't know it just like it doesn't make sense four, but which is 10 plus minus 6 which is 10 maybe they don't when they do assembler i don't know four so you're looking at this and you're going is this magic wait you go wait a second and you realize that all of a sudden mathematics is more interesting than you thought because <laughs> yo when I get questions on my channel, underrated maths. Me, do I need a lot of math for computer science? Do I need to know a lot of math? And I go, no, bro. All you need to know is addition. <laughs> Every data structure is built on top of pointers. And pointers operate using addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction is implemented through addition. So all we have is addition. And then if you want to go really deep, you can get solid logic though. Got to give you that. Adders, which oh Gotta my give god, you that. I think I might be able to show you. Um, so it's crazy just to get lower and lower. Oh my god. Every Everything's making sense now. Like my whole life is shocked. A full adder involves two AND gates, OR gate, XOR, XOR, and then these gates are implemented using transistors. So yeah, I still don't know all that much about the transistor level, which is which is on my list of things to research. I remember doing this when I did electronics, but 
I'm not even sure. If I still suck at that stuff now. Like a good, I, I think I was supposed to tell you guys how to get started learning computer science, but I think I just went on this crazy rant and. Ex I think you just like. I think, I think what you did, was start by drinking. An entire bottle of whatever that is. What whatever that is. I, I mean, I shouldn't talk, but like. What is that? What is it? What is it? Buckley's. <laughs> a bottle of Buckley's. No, I'm pretty sure it's not Sauvignon Blanc. Buckley's. Buckley's whiskey. Is this the stuff? Is that? Is that? Did he drink a... That looks like goddamn medicine. <laughs> like... When is this video from? 2018. Buckley's. 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 But that doesn't look like... Like, it's rye whiskey, right? Oh, but that's Australian. That's Australian. It won't be, like... It won't be, like, Australian stuff. It won't be, like... Buckley's. What is it? Whiskey? Because this is like a apothecary. How do you pronounce apoth? I always said apothecary. That can't be right. Apothecary. <laughs> like Buckley's drink, U.S. That makes like Buckley's the cough. See, this looks like cough medicine, right? Can I get? Can I get? Can I get a freeze frame on that? Like, do I have to play it through? I'm a little sick right now. I don't know if you can tell, but we gotta drink some alcohol. This one is called Buckley's. Ah, I should have. Frozen it early. See, he's sick. Maybe it was cops. No, no, because he said like, he said alcohol, right? Buckley's cough suppressant. Is it alcoholic? Alcohol. Wait, what? What? Wait. Oh no, an alcohol food. I thought it was like Buckley's mixture cough suppressant and alcohol. Like, they actually sell it there. Like, it wouldn't have surprised me, actually. But like... But like there's a Buckley's in Australia that's like a rye whiskey. That's not this. Buckley's alcohol. My search history is going to be like. Maybe is it like. Is this Buckley's Chardonnay? Maybe I just type in Canada. Buckley's alcohol. Buckley's. Wait. There's the logo there. It's got the little Canadian maple leaf flag. Can I go back a step? I don't know if you can tell, but we gotta drink some alcohol. This one is called... Maybe it is cough suppressant. It could be.
Yeah, uh, it could be. Buy. Let's buy some Buckley's. Do, is that my mistake? Should I have taken this before, like, doing, like, admittedly, what well, was eight years of computer science? Buy Buckley's cough syrup. Images. No, I don't want Robotus and your ding. Ah, 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 ah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Is this. Have we solved. Is this. This looks like the one, right? That looks like the one. That looks like. That looks like it's it. I was looking at a bottle of whiskey the whole time. And it was like. But he said alcohol. He says alcohol. This is not. That's not alcohol. It is sequels free. That is a hundred percent this, right? But he says alcohol. This is where I thought it was like a whiskey bottle, like some sort of like Irish whiskey or something. I'm a little sick right now. I don't know if you can tell, but we also, why is he making this? Like, I'm assuming his Patreon is not like making him do this like why would he just not wait till he's not sick why would you like burn out while you have a cold which is over in like three days or whatever i think um and just like wait to do an eight minute video like what why why would you go into like a psychedelic fever dream to like make an eight minute video on computer science the end of the video Mind you, I did like eight years of computer science, and I do kind of dig it. I'm a little sick right now. I don't know if you can tell, but we gotta drink some alcohol. This one mm. is called Buckley's. I just... Spilled a bit of scotch on my keyboard. It's not scotch, actually. It's Australian. I shouldn't say scotch. This is actually Australian whiskey. I don't want to get it in my keycaps. Where did we get up to? I'm lost. So you're looking at this and you're going... Yep. Yep. All, all, I've, all I've ascertained is he, is he did really random stuff in computer science and... Drinks entire bottles of cough syrup. Is this magic? Wait, you go, wait a second. And you realize that all of a sudden, mathematics is more interesting than you thought because... <laughs> oh, I saw this bit. Yo, when I get questions on my channel, people... I dig doing meaning of life stuff, though. This is like my jam. Just ...operate using addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction is implemented through addition. So all we have is addition. And then if you want to go really deep, you can get into logic design and build your own adders, which, oh my god, I think I might be able to show you. Um, so it's crazy just to get lower and lower. Oh my god. It's cool stuff, but a now. weird leap like, at the same time. My life is shocked. A full adder involves two AND gates, OR gate, XOR, XOR, and then these gates He doesn't uh, explain, like, what an XOR so, is. Yeah, I still don't know all gate. that much about the transistor level, which is, which is on my list of things to research. I'm not even sure if this video couple years of what I've learned. This is the best... Where is it? This. No, dude, what? No. If this video was, like, a... This. This frame sums up computer science, but is like just like the best vibe in this video. I'm not even sure if this video was like a good. I, I think I was supposed. You know, to I was gonna do something to useful. Started learning computer science, but I, I feel like that's I already like a bust. Rant and explain like the past three years of what I've learned. The main things is choose a language like Java or Python to start learning the basic constructs of if statements, functions, objects. Cho choose Java or Python, but not Java. Uh, once you feel really comfortable with that, move to C and then try to recreate your programs in C. And then once you feel comfortable. 
yes, weird explanation, but also totally recommend C. Doesn't have to be seen. That do some pointers in C, and then work on data structures. Okay, I'll start with a linked list. Go to like a stack. Go to like a queue. Look at some hash tables. Dude, you can trees, do this in Java. All the pointers, man. All the memory management. All the pointers. Read the C programming book. Once you feel like you're so good at C, which that won't happen quick, okay? You know, you could go and work on some bigger applications, right? You could build pretty much whatever you want at that point. Uh, but what I would recommend is... I don't know if people get good at C in three years. I mean, this guy did, like, what, three years? Yeah, I'd, I don't know. It can be okay, though, but, like... Is at least good is a different... Um, Honestly, once you get to that point... It's a different you know, thing. Your life will be much easier, because that's pretty much where I'm at, and I'm just, like, I feel like I can just teach myself anything, you know? Teach yourself anything? Yeah, I don't know. Does it make your life easier? Probably not. But, you know. Maybe you don't want life to be easier. Jesus. Like, are my tabs on stream? They are. Like, I have, like, computer science searches and a bit of games industry stuff. And, like, most of my tabs are just trying to work out what the hell Buckley's was and, like, that thing that he was just, like, drinking. Also not what I wanted. But... At the same time, I have to make, I have to make this video. I think I have to send myself an email telling myself to like, make this video. Wait. Make my whole computer science video i'm gonna see that tomorrow morning and it's gonna make no goddamn sense to me at all yeah did that send to the right did i send it to me i think i did i was gonna look for like courses and shit but yeah Apparently not. Um, I have to do one of these now. I'm going to have to watch more of these, though. <laughs> How to program. How to program drum groups. Oh, Jesus. I actually... This is so much more interesting. Oh, free code camp. Can I just like, is free code camp good? <laughs> yeah, I don't trust this review. Career karma. Yeah, that's better. Is free code camp, is free code camp a good way to learn programming? Is free code camp worth it? I've heard a lot of people say it's worthless and others say it's amazing. That's a, that's a very differing opinion. It's really personal preference. This is the most non-committal review. Really? Well... Hang on. Oh, this is some... This is like a guy doing it. Wait. Hang on. No. Is this... Is this... There's a... Wait. Is this by Free Code Camp? Or is this... Some person doing Free Code Camp on stream? In this course, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started. Oh, no, so it's a course. Programming in Python. I always find it, like, weird when people call it Python. Maybe it's, like, my accent, but it just seems weird. 
cool. Let me add this to watch later. Actually, no. Because reasons. Dude is a legend. He's also called Stan. Dude is a Stan. I'm going to up upvote this guy who's a Stan. I mean, look, actually, like, you don't get kudos for being 73, but, like, if you want to learn stuff, learn it. This guy is, like, a genuine stand, just the same. Like, because it's, like, something that I don't, like, say very often, but, like, you know, my, my dad was in his 70s. He went in his first, like, games promotion tour, you know, was involved in designing, like, his first game, like, in his 70s. So, like, just do it. Like, if you want to do it, do it. Oh, God damn it. Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My oh, there's a C one. Wait, dude, that's a different different one to what I was on before. Let me do both. I'm gonna do both. I'm just gonna save the URLs. I wanted the the Python one. Do I have to call it Python? Wait. Learn Java in fourteen minutes. See, I know this is not right. Like it already says, learn Java quickly. By watching this video to the very end. If you do, you will walk away as a better Java program. Obviously, you need to know it first. Introduction to programming and computer science. H how long is like... How long is this? Two Welcome hours. the introduction of programming. Oh my god, it's two hours. I can do this one, like... I can find a night to do this, I think. I just want to, like, collect them for now, but, like, I can find a night to do this. Where's the f fucking Python one, dude? Sag. Ho. How. How to program. How to program. I get, Jesus, I get different ones, like, every time. Do not learn to program. Learn to problem solve instead. Yes, this is the correct take. But I don't want the correct take. I want to, I want to just, <laughs> I'm not here for a correct take. I want, like, I want to learn to program. Dude, what? Why you shouldn't learn? Okay, I gotta watch this. Uh, code. Is it free coding? Is it free code camp? Do I look for it later? Hello, everyone. Ah, this is no, I want this. Why should you not learn Python? In 2021. So this it, does everyone say Python? Does everyone say this? Does everyone say this? How to pronounce Python? Python. Python. I bumped my Python. I even bumped my microphone. Look. Python. 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 See, it says there, thun. It says thun. It says thun. Python. 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 Here, what does YouTube say? Python. Oh, shit. What did I, what did I open? What did I just, what did I just click? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Greetings on my video. So, in this video, I will show how to pronounce this word. The pronunciation of this word sounds like Python. 
Python. I will repeat more slowly. Python. Firstly, it's not the right way to pronounce it, but Python. <laughs> Is this a channel? Thanks for listening. If you like this video, please subscribe oh my to my God. channel. If you want to share your opinion, please leave comments for this video. Thanks and goodbye. This is an actual... There is a channel that... What? Wordbox, dude. No! No, this is an auto channel, sure. They've all got the same goddamn... Ponograph. Is, 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 pon is it Ponograph or Ponograph? I don't trust them because they say Python. No, it says Ponograph. No, porn no, 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 that's not, that's not, that's, that's, po pono, pono, what? Pon I need a, I need a, I need a, I need a separate, I need a separate private window here. Phonograph is not a real word. Phonograph. Phonograph. Phon phonograph is a word. Ponograph is not. Pon. What? Ponograph. Ponograph is not a word. Ponygraph. Ponygraph. Yeah. Ponograph. <laughs> Ponograph is not a word. Ponograph. It's what? This is not. That's... Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube. That's not a word. What did I just watch? No. Word box is word box a troll? Dude, wait, Sixen. This has to be one of these like weird champ like generated channels, right? I have to like search for these privately in case there's stuff that I don't know about. McClintons. How to pronounce <laughs> McClintons? There is no way this is real. McClintons. I mean, the, the pronunciation's correct. McClintons. <laughs> McClintons. <laughs> McClintons. No. McClintons. 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 That's all. Thanks for watching. I mean, how not to take Please this personally like is share if you enjoyed the video. A good. <laughs> Wait, is there a how to pronounce playlist? Wordbox bloopers? Jesus, there's a bloopers channel? This must be a fucking generated channel, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna post this somewhere. Hang on. Hey, thanks for tapping this video's.
Now I'm going to tell you how pronounce this word. So to begin, you can just can say, Will wait Nongo. <laughs> Will wait Nongo. <laughs> is that is, No, I don't want to be I don't want to be insensitive here. It's just actually No, that can't that can't be well, actually no, it could be, but like Like I know, I know. Well, sh I, no, sh no. I I bollocked up my computer for a moment. H, U E, which oh Jesus. Oh, it's a ah. Oh. It's 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 not. It's a wait. Why is this a blooper? Jeez. Now I feel bad. Like, that's an actual... Although... No, I don't really, because, like, this is in the bloopers. Is it... Wh why? Oh, okay, that's why. That's not how it's pronounced. Next time pronounce... Okay. We'll wait longer. <laughs> I was going to say... Because well, the pronunciation just sounds like garbage, right? See, now I feel like, I, I, I got a feeling like that was going to be like a really insensitive blue, but now how do I pronounce this? Because also I say Guatemala, but I may be wrong. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. What is it? Hue, hue, tenengo. Hue, hue, tenengo? Hue, hue, tenengo. What about this? You wet an engo. Huetenengo. Huetenengo. So it's like Hua Hua Tenengo or Hua Tenengo. Yeah? Versus what 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 the hell did they call it? We'll wait Nongo. <laughs> See, I should have known when they like said Python. Oh wait, 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 wait. Is this an automated thing? Yetter.io, yetter.io. Wait, what? What? Yetta. It's yetter.io, right? Oh, it just takes me to the YouTube page. I'm so confused. Who puts it? Who? Who suggests this stuff then? I'm probably like feeding trolls by watching these videos, but. But Jesus, that is a good comment. Hi guys. Welcome to my videos. Well, in this video, I will show how to pronounce this word. The pronunciation of this word is sounds like. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X What? There is just There is just no way that is How how do I add to this I mean I don't know if I wanna like feed this troll actually but how how do people does it just tr like does it just look up like stuff on the internet and f find it or like what let me let me save this for like for future reference What is this intro? What am I watching? Every word a short story. I will I will give Hello, you that. Everyone. Thanks for tapping this video. In this video I will show how to pronounce this word. It says laughing like Joker. The word what? you are watching is sounds like. 
<laughs> this is too good. I will repeat. Wait, did they pronounce it differently? Didn't they? <laughs> That's all. Thanks for listening. If you I want to, I want to tell like pronounce the studio. If you want to share your opinion, please leave comments for this video. Thanks and goodbye. This is an underrated video. That's close to the studio. <laughs> Hang on, what? How? How? I can't. I can't say that. Su I can't say it. Su How did it get Thanks for watching. How? Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube. How is that not like su su I can't I can't I can't do what they how am I supposed to pronounce these words? Okay, this is like derailed anything that I wanted to legitimately do here. Oh yeah, let's watch this more like. Why should you not learn Python? This is in twenty twenty one. So this is. I feel like this is a uh, not. <clears throat> not in a derogatory sense at all. I feel like this is an entirely ADHD take on like learning programming here. Like I've spent, I swear I've spent more time on like a troll pronunciation channel than like anything else. Why should you not learn Python in 2021? So this thing keeps happening to me where I find somebody who's interested in learning to code and they say to me, Mark, I'm thinking about learning Python. And then I say, Stop saying Python. Python. And then they say, well, because it's the world's most popular programming language it's the most used and right now it is the number one most popular program it's it's still the but reason to learn it jesus but here that does not mean that you should use it just because it is widely being used right now does not mean that's something that you should learn okay and there's reasons for this guy has good take though i like your thinking this is some um, very good brain First thinking off, people come to me asking me this thing they say, I don't know why I'm going to learn it. I'm just going to learn it because it's the most popular thing. Well, also good brain thinking. I like your take. Get you a job. Let's talk about Mind you, you should still learn Python first, but like, dude, jobs for a second. this is a good take. Jobs out there for Python are in data science. So if you do want to become a data scientist, then Python might be a good choice for you. The other big one is Django and Python. It's a website that you to build back in. Uh, APIs and things. Because uh, if you're a new programmer, no one's going to hire a junior developer to build back ends. They just don't. No one does. That is not the path you want to go down. Just so I you do. Can you can don't also so many go APIs selling people short. Build out there. So you've got two little options here. And then the reason why it's the most popular is because it's just spread on so many things. Uh, when you go to look at the jobs on Upwork, okay, for instance, we're going to look at con contract projects. They're all going to tell you about how they need PHP, they need Python, they need... Jack dude, they PH... Dude, uh, take was good until now, but, like, PHP is, like, worse than Python for learning. Python has other good reasons behind it. Like, it is the single best stepping stone to learning anything else. Like, Jesus, PHP. They list, of like, 20 different things. Every single one of those... PHP. 20... Different things they want you to know. I, I counted. Yeah, is it I counted four, and Git was one of them. Used everywhere, sure. Is it a versatile language that you could just put in any application? Sure, it is. But as a new person, as a new developer trying to get into this industry, trying to get a job, this should not be the first thing that you learn because you're not. Uh, okay, you had a good take. You should have like kept on that line of thinking, dude. You had a good take. You're not going to make money with it. 
you're not going to get a job with it. And I say this, I tell people this all the time. Yeah, but you can learn other languages that will get you a job, they dude. And they say, well, I think you're wrong, Mark, because it's a good starter language for people to learn. You know, it segues into other languages. No, don't learn something just to fiddle around with it. If you want to fiddle with it, then fine. Ignore this video and go fiddle with it. Dude, are you like, what? Did you like literally like misconstrue people's points like instantly there? <laughs> like people don't learn their like fundamentally, especially if like you want to do anything like serious, like you don't learn stuff in your like fundamental primary language to start with. Like you learn things conceptually first. Python. Dude. If you want a job, if you want to do contract work or actually get a full-time job, then don't learn it. And why? Because there are so many other better... Wait, wait, be wait. C++, like, learn Python first. .NET, C Sharp. C Sharp is, like... Okay, .NET is more than C Sharp, but, like, effectively, it's normally lumped in with C Sharp. Definitely learn Python first. JavaScript? Maybe, but, like, without learning, like, a Python first for, like... The disciplinary factors alone, and I stress the disciplinary factors, like, you could end up with, like, really goddamn bad habits and just write garbage JavaScript. What the hell are these other things? I wish I knew these logos, but, like, why would you not... I can't pick fucking languages from low... or environments from low... For you. And the key word here is oh, my God, did he just list C++ as a starting path? Okay. You may say, I want to learn Python because it's the most popular language. But what's the path? Where is that going to take you? And you probably People have just set the path. They've just, they have just have just said. Job, unless it's data science, for instance. Uh, or Python Django. But again, Django, no one's going to hire you as a junior Django developer. It just doesn't happen. A, it does. But, like, B, you kind of self-debunked it, dude. Uh, and those jobs are very low. Go search for Django. D-J-A-N-G-O. <laughs> Go search for that online and see how many jobs there are. There's not very many jobs. Uh, and so what tends to happen is why it's so popular is because people will use it with the other programming languages. So let's go back to the idea about a path. Here is a really great path for you if you're brand new to development. Learning Swift and I. Oh, Swift. You only have no! One. Dude, like, you locked into goddamn Apple products. Also, Swift is basically... Like, it's definitely Python-esque. I, I wouldn't say based on Python, but it's definitely in that family. So, like, even if you're going to learn Swift, goddammit, you should still learn Python first. This is like an anti-point. You definitely learn Python first. Definitely. You learn one programming language, and it comes right with the... Yeah, but you learn concepts, you... Goddammit, it, you dingus. Building iPhone apps. Same thing with Kotlin and Android. You're going to learn one thing, uh, and you get to build apps. With oh, it. it's Kotlin! Um, yeah, I don't know enough about Kotlin. But even then, like, that doesn't... Do... I guess Kotlin feeds into Java. But Kotlin in itself, that, that feels way too niche. Like, if you're going to complain about, like, Python for all those reasons, like, jobs, etc., like, Kotlin just sounds like way more niche than Python in general. So it's a direct path to actually doing something. And if you go on to Upwork or look for full-time jobs, you can find jobs just for Swift and just for Kotlin and Android. Okay, just for Swift. Yeah, but not for, not for people learning the languages, people who know, like, hardware infrastructures or, like, how to deploy apps in production, dude. It's it's... That's all you got to know. Whereas if you go on to Upwork and look for a project in Python, they want you to know 10 or 20 different things. Also... Let's go back to that frame. If you go on to Upwork and look for a project in Python, they want you to know 10 or... These are JavaScript things and Ruby things and PHP. Also, like, it's for a full stack person. So, like... Python here is not, like, the focus. The, the full stack bit is the focus. Like, this is not for a Python person. This is for a full-stack person. Like, either this person... No, like, there is no way they don't understand 
the difference between like a specialist and like a full stack generalist. There is just no way. So they have to be like deliberately misrepresenting it here. Like they just they just they just have to be. Twenty different things. Also, JavaScript is something we should absolutely consider. And again, just like yeah, I, I like, like that. I will agree with. Itself, I will agree. That would be a complete waste of time just to learn JavaScript. You need to have a path. The good. Well, actually, no. You can just get away with JavaScript on its own, depending on what you're doing. There's the thing about JavaScript is there are so many uses for it. Uh, that's the the only problem with JavaScript is without like training in other areas you just write goddamn garbage javascript and i have seen some garbage javascript in my time for me included and if you go into upwork you can actually find projects that are javascript only you know i need someone to code me this little thing real quick it's and dude it's not those for python and so uh, it's not javascript, javascript only it's and web developer you're going to learn html css javascript and react most likely if you learn those that's things, not just javascript you can get contract projects just a couple months after starting to learn to code uh and you can get a full-time job maybe six eight ten months after learning if you get really really good so it's a very straightforward path okay and remember though you're not learning javascript i didn't you're say not a you're not a programmer though like this is like people who want to like i mean i don't know i don't know who is this who is this even aimed at javascript i said learn html css javascript and react you got to know those things but it's a great path in order to get a job it's for what easy jobs for python you can't i don't know anybody who just learned to code on their own and they got their very first job using only python i actually don't know one developer who got their first job only using python that's not how it works and that's not the reason you learn python i and i don't honestly believe that would be anyone's reason for learning python python it typically goes like this hey mark i got this job and I'm like, okay, what do you do? Well, I'm using JavaScript. I'm using HTML, CSS. Oh, and I'm using Python. There's always the and. I'm and I'm using it. Okay, it's. You know what? I know a lot of people in various tech, programming, computer-related industries. I have never had that conversation with anybody. I have never had someone, and I'm someone who like loves my like languages and stacks and knowing all this stuff not once have i ever had that conversation i want to know what this person's friends are i want to know who this person's friends are like never just by itself unless in a lot of cases data science okay? people just come and tell him this information these are some really important things you consider because javascript is just as easy to learn as python python is a great language it's no it's not i mean it's it's easy enough to learn badly but like like it's not how like easy it is to just do like baseline stuff python like enforces discipline and it forces you to learn some things properly that other languages don't force you to learn like javascript which lets you get away with absolute trash fire code it's very easy to learn but don't learn it unless you have a path i'm a big advocate of not spending any time learning something unless it's on a path i meet people like this all the time they're in college Someone the other day was on one of my live streams. Are you against and, learning uh, stuff, dude? I learn C, and I'm like, no, don't learn C. He's like, but they're teaching that to me in college right now. I said, well, it's a. <sighs> I mean, some stuff that they like, they do teach some bad stuff in courses, but I don't know if I've ever given anyone advice. Just don't learn your curriculum material. Don't learn your tested course material. Maybe, maybe this is not the best life advice. Also, like, I noticed, like, they ask this stuff. From college dude from live stream. Clearly, that's their name. And... No background questions and no context. Like, I feel like this is really weird advice with no context. The teacher says that it's going to build foundations for the future no, for other languages. No, it's not. Go learn JavaScript. That can be your foundation. You don't need a programming language to be the foundation of another programming language. Okay, so when people come to tell me, well, Mark, you should, you should stop saying I this because Python... I feel like... 
This person either deliberately misrepresents or just doesn't understand how language semantics work. It's a good starter language just to learn to code. No, don't spend one minute. Let me say this again. Don't spend one minute learning a programming language that isn't going to project you on a career path. Okay, that's not going to help you in what. Why you is it all about your career path? You to build some type of application, and you know what you want, and for some reason Python's what you need to do. That's fine, go do that. But I don't see any. I mean, path. Yeah, it doesn't have to be career path. Have an app idea. You probably build a website or an iPhone app or Android app. Why learn something that you're not going to necessarily do anything with? Versus Swift and iOS. You can you like it. Apps, iPhone apps, Android uh, for Kotlin, Android. Just go build Android apps. Uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. You can go build uh, websites. You can build web apps. You can build mobile apps with that. With HTML, CSS. you can build like three hot trash, like really bad sets of apps with that skill set, with like no fundamental understanding of how programs work and how quality control works or anything, any other like foundational concepts like that. Let's put this in context. I'm not talking to you, advanced programmers out there. Okay, if you already are a programmer, sure, go learn Python. I'm talking to all the people who are absolutely brand new, trying to figure things out. If you're somebody who's trying to figure it out, figure out what you want to do, don't learn Python. Learn Swift or iOS, learn Kotlin or Android, or learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. This, is just, really a, hate this is just a horrible hot take. All those things, I don't want anything that has to do with user interface. Well, you could consider doing back-end development, and you don't even have to learn JavaScript for that, though you can. That's another reason to learn JavaScript. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you could learn back-end development. The problem is there are so few jobs for junior back-end developers. There are very, very few jobs. That's just the way it is. Most... Yeah, like, you have to develop your skills. That's, that's like... Most of the time, front-end web developers eventually migrate into the back-end. Not in all cases. That... 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 That as a path is, like... A really garbage path, dude. These are entirely different disciplines. Entirely different. Your budget sometimes, uh, or most of the time, I mean. You want to be a back-end developer, you don't want to do anything with user interface, that's fine. You can do that, you're just going to have, have a harder path. You're going to have a harder path, and in that case, learn whatever you want. If you want to learn the Go programming language or some other server-side language, you're welcome to do that, but pick your path. That's the point. Pick your path. If you're just gung ho about Python, then learn Python and Django and build your back end APIs. Feel free to do that. It's just very hard to get projects and jobs for that. For those of you who are new, though, I, I just laid out some amazing paths for you. Of course, there's so many jobs that are out there. That, you know, if you, if you want to get into game development, it's like I can't pick a clear point. For, like, I can see words that are meant to like suggest there is a clear point. I just can't pick a clear point for this. This whole conversation is pointless because you're not going to learn JavaScript, Python, or any of that stuff. Go learn C Sharp. Dude. Pi game. I've watched videos on people who have successfully used Pi game. Just use Pi game. Make game in Python easier than Unity, easier than other language. Use Make, make Python. Python forces you to make stuff good because that's how language is designed it it python forces you to do things properly or it doesn't work at all like if you want entry to game industry um as someone who produces full products pi game is great it's like how does this person not know pi game exists unity or C++, but we're not talking about games. We're just talking about uh, for learners who want to get jobs, okay? Don't learn Python. Learn Swift or learn Kotlin or learn uh, JavaScript, okay? That, that's the starting point because that's how you get paid. That's how you get your first job. And then guess what? You can learn whatever you want after that. See, this is the problem, right? Let's, like, you make these blanket, like, undeclared assumptions, like, blanket undeclared assumptions and are basically like targeting this a an absolute niche group of people and then assuming that this like wisdom applies to everyone you can go master python you can go become a game developer i mean i can do that too want. but like and you'll have the tools in your belt and you have gotten paid for it i'm trying to help you if you're brand new because so many new people they learn a language and they learn another language and then they learn another i feel like 
I know it's clickbait and I know you need the click throughs and it's how you make the money on YouTube or when you're writing any material. But you can also end up giving like horrible hot take advice to people. Like you have to make it clear who this is for and why you're saying what you're saying. Confused and frustrated. Whereas the students that we help all the time on our social media and at our company and our program Dev Tips Academy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is an ad. That's why. I'm an offender. They're all having success because we point them on a specific. All of them. All. Specific path. When you have a path, you're able to have. And by success, it's like saleable skills that directly reflect back well on the course more success more quickly because there's stepping stones versus just being thrown into the world of programming which language do i learn which frameworks do i need what if i want to build a desktop app can i use python sure but can you use your own no you're going to need some user interface this is the wrong take framework. like can that see program? that's like a real it's misrepresentation a of python hell uh and so yeah it's the most used language i mean if you want to like instantly get in like really really short term get into an industry set yourself up and make money yeah sure this makes sense but that's like at best it's a restricted special interest group like anybody who wants to learn this more seriously than like someone after instant sales results like it's is definitely going to take a different path to this and with all the talk about path like i feel like that's Without just not there, given any respect it's just scattered everywhere but there's no path for it why should you not learn python in 2021 but this is an ad i mean they're not going to say this if that's your new programmer use one of the options that i talked about ios swift kotlin android javascript html css react uh, you can also learn Angular as well, too. Those are all going to get you jobs and paid projects much quicker than anything else. And they're fairly easy to learn. So I hate it when people say fairly easy or things that are like, you know, non, non quantifiable so descriptions. Random languages, pick a path. And if you can stick on a path, you'll have results before you know it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested in more, click subscribe to get notified when the new videos come out. Is, is there a dev is there a dev slopes course is it a paid is the dev slopes course paid i don't want to do it right away if it's a paid dev slopes academy oh i gotta apply jesus oh my god it's what no i can't leech this Ugh. maybe one day i'll take this on Maybe. I don't want to troll them right now, though. This sounds horrible to me. Upwork review and coaching. Oh my god, the, the, oh my god, the, oh. Uh. See, yeah, this, this is the thing, right? 100% sounds like it, it's just made for like, it's just made for like, pizza delivery style, Upwork, like, code snippets. It just kind of, like, reeks in exactly, like, that sort of development mentality. Not that being on Upwork in itself is a bad thing, but that, like, that, like, fast food style of development. Like, if you're good and you want to, like, make some cash... I'm totally cool with it, you know, go and effectively do, like, you know, the pizza delivery of development. Like, I'm 100% cool with that. But 
basically training people to cap out career wise like to make like like okay that's like if you want to cook right if you want to become like a chef and you go to culinary school because that's like what chefs do you, you know you can you can make takeaway pizza because it's a good way to make money like people buy that and they like eat it up it's definitely a good way to make money but that's not your ceiling you could do well, like whatever it is that you you could be like a sushi chef or whatever you could be like cooking your wagyu your ceiling is like whatever you've specialized into like you, you've you've created like your skill sets but you don't train in school just to make takeaway pizza and then just move into making sushi like you just don't um so like you know you, you might be making this food and you might be doing okay with it but you've always got options you've got like the option to like create your 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 dream restaurant or be like a sous chef in your like dream situation where i feel like this just encourages people to cap out and to set their ceiling like at takeaway pizza level and you can make a really fast takeaway pizza but that's like that's the limit of what you can achieve and i've like met plenty of people like that um so i definitely know what happens but it's just just uh just that situation so um i definitely think uh, i don't wanna oh there's free courses actually there's beginner ios is this allowed is this allowed is this Is this sort of selling like a bit of a sort of false sort of I don't know a false hope for you know I don't think you're gonna become Elon Musk from this um, especially because I don't think Elon Musk does any of his own programming in fact, I'm pretty sure he doesn't do his own programming. You don't need to, like... Uh, I've got to watch more of these. I want to watch this. I want to see what you... Hello, everyone. My name is TJ, and I'm a self-taught software engineer. And in this video, I want to see. I want to see what that pop is. I, I want to see. From thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars a year to over three times <coughs> by teaching myself how to code. So make sure to subscribe, as I'll be posting coding tutorials and a lot of other tips and resources that you can use to start teaching yourself how to I'm code. I'm gonna check out the tutorials, maybe this too. This video is broken into different sections, so check the description below for different timestamps. I'm wondering, is this like ahead. U.S. dollars? Now. A quick background on me. I was born in Nigeria, but I grew up in Dallas, Texas. Okay, I yeah, okay. I graduated at UT Austin, where I got a bachelor's degree so it is in US. nutritional science. And after that, I went to Jesus. State University, and I got a graduate business degree. Jesus. Now, all of nutritional science, of that's a departure. Getting me into a lot of student loan debt. And it was the stress and pressure of being broke that ultimately drove me to start teaching myself how to code. Legend. Before I Legend. To how to code, I was working as a as a business analyst for a small tech company in Austin, where I was making thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Wait. A year. So each paycheck was about twelve twelve hundred dollars. You're an analyst. Time. But my student loan payments were thirty seven thousand dollar analyst. A month. So after paying my student loans, I was pretty much just living off of one paycheck. 
the main turning point happened for me when I got a promotion. So I got promoted from business. It's pretty eye-opening to see those numbers, actually. My salary didn't. On a serious promotion. note. So I went back and forth with the manager, asking for a raise, and the manager ultimately gave me a raise, and my salary went from thirty-seven thousand five hundred to thirty-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-eight dollars a year. Spe very, very and specific number there. Something about them leaving out the extra two dollars to make my salary forty thousand dollars a year even. Something about that just kind of really rubbed me the wrong way, and I knew right then and there that that this salary was not going to help me to pay off my student loans. It's a pretty or insulting move. The type of lifestyle that I wanted to live, and I decided that day that I was going to start teaching myself how to code. As soon as I made that choice, for real, I called my friend that was a software engineer, and I asked her. Oh, okay. I want to have a friend. Apps. What is the least amount of things that I need to know? So she immediately started to tell Smart. me about the difference between mobile apps and web apps, uh, front end versus back end, etc. Wait. But she also ultimately pointed me towards Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Mature age. Beginner friendly. Dude, Ruby mature age. You did all this. And she also told me to check out the course curriculum. That's kind of huge. Online coding boot camps to see what they were teaching their students. So. I did just that. I found like General Assembly and Dev Bootcamp at the time, which doesn't um, exist anymore. But really? I requested the course curriculum for all of these coding oh, camps, yes. and I used that. To I was like a free code camp coding curriculum using using a bunch of free online interactive tutorials to help teach me each topic. Now, my dream job at the time was to be a software developer at IBM. And, and and I actually found IBM? a job post for that role. Really? And I printed out that job posting and I wrote on it December two thousand. I mean you gotta have dreams, right? That was the deadline that I gave myself to make a career switch from being a business analyst to being a software developer. So now usually the to study I work I work usually the jump goes all the way from nine to five and I would come home from work and I would I would eat and watch like an hour or two of like Suits or Mr. Robot. <laughs> and after that, I would study all night until around 1 to 2 a.m. Is it just me? Weekends, or is he like really ultra specific? Or going, or going to a tech event. Then I would be home just studying all day. And that was my schedule for a few months until I started to think that my full-time job was getting in the way. And I really wanted to, to just try to really go all in. And study and, and learn how to code full time. My apartment lease was ending in October, and I really wanted to use the last few months in my apartment to study coding full time. This so is commitment. I quit my job in July after I saved up enough money to pay the rest of my rent and to also have a few leftovers just to kind of eat and buy gas for for at least a couple months. Now, at the time, two of my sisters lived in Austin, and my girlfriend had just moved to Austin as well, so I knew that I would have a place to live. By the time I quit my job in July, I was already building basic apps on my own, but I kind of felt stuck, and I wasn't really sure what to do next. So I talked to a friend about it, and this friend convinced me to attend a coding boot camp. So I took out a loan, and I went to dev boot camp. Now... The point of a coding boot camp is to help absolute beginners go from knowing nothing to being able to build basic web apps on their own. But I was already doing that before I got to the boot camp, so now I'm interested. I spent most of my time at the coding boot camp just working on personal projects for my portfolio, especially since I had teachers to talk to that can now quickly help me with things. I finished that. I think that's why you got successful. I think I, just I just I that initiative. From learning to code and working on projects to study for interviews and job searching full time. I spent the first half of my day applying to jobs and the second half studying for interviews and I treated that like my nine to five. Important note, the whole time that I was teaching myself how to code, I was actually tweeting about my progress on Twitter. And this engineering manager has started following me and was impressed by my progress. And this is how I yeah, got my first this job is fair. from a random stranger on Twitter that just so happened to be. I mean, this is an impressive journey, right? Now, Considering you're like this offer was a entirely offer mature age self taught. Software developer apprenticeship that would pay $75,000 a year. But this offer would not be confirmed until December. 
And even if it was confirmed, the job wouldn't start until January. Now, mind you, this is September, and I'm broken, unemployed, and bouncing between my sister and my girlfriend's place. So, needless to say, I kept job searching. Now, my first official offer letter came November 2016 when I got offered a role to work as a test automation developer for a major insurance company in Scottsdale, Arizona. The salary for this role was $59,000 a year, but outside of me having to move to Arizona, this job also wouldn't start until January. But at the time, I was starting to get stressed and kind of discouraged with the whole job search. So I immediately <laughs> I, I get that the first official offer letter that I got. Now, keep in mind, my goal was to make a career switch by December 2016. So for me to have accepted a job offer now in November 2016, I felt kind of happy. You know, I felt a little bit relieved that I had somewhat achieved my goal or not somewhat, but but had achieved my goal. Uh, and I just kind of took a couple days to breathe easier. Now, shortly after accepting my full-time job offer to start in January, I also got another offer for a one-month apprenticeship with a meal delivery startup in Silicon Valley. Now, mind you, even though I had a full-time job offer to start in January, I was still broke and unemployed until I started working. So having this offer in December was perfect. So I didn't end up working at either of those two companies because what had happened was the week before I was going to fly out to Silicon Valley, I, I had booked my plane ticket for Saturday. And the Wednesday before, before that, I just casually reached out to, to a local entrepreneur or startup founder in Austin just to kind of network with them and see what they were working on and just and just overall meet them before I moved to Silicon Valley and then moved to Arizona. And 20 minutes into that meeting, this guy offered me a full-time software engineering role to start in December for $75,000 a year. I don't know about you, but I knew that I would be a fool to not accept that offer because one, I got to stay in Austin with my sisters and my girlfriend. And two, in Texas, you don't pay state income tax like you do in, in Arizona, and three, seventy-five thousand dollars was twice what I was making before working as a business analyst. So I immediately accepted the offer, and I started working for that startup. And that startup was a cybersecurity startup in Austin that actually just got acquired a few months ago. So now that I had a full-time job working as a software engineer, things were things were a bit easier because. The hardest part about this whole journey is getting that first job. But once you get that first job, recruiters are going to be messaging you like almost every day, right? So what happened with me in terms of how I got to six figures was I ended up changing jobs every 11 months. I knew that the best way for me to significantly increase my income was to change jobs. Getting a raise wasn't really it because... The average raise is between three, three to five percent, but I really wanted to make six figures. So what happened was I left my first job after eleven months, and I got another job. So I went from making seventy-five thousand to around ninety thousand dollars, and then I left that job after eleven months, where I went from making ninety thousand to six figures. And after that, I started to kind of take on part-time work, helping to mentor uh, coding boot camp students. And, and the income from that took my salary or took my total compensation to over $120,000 a year. And that's how I ended up going from $37,000 a year to six figures in less than three years. So thank you so much for listening to my story. If you wanna, if you wanna hear more about my experience, especially my experience uh, working for a startup that was in TechStars, and then working for a startup that ended up in Shark Tank, which, which is actually kind of crazy. Um, subscribe and keep up because I'll be posting those videos to kind of talk about the difference between working for a TechStars startup and working for a Shark Tank startup, and just some of the different challenges that you face. And I will also be posting coding tutorials to help to teach you guys how to start teaching yourself how to code as well.
So subscribe. We'll see you later. See, that is legit inspiring. That is legit inspiring. This is like, that is the kind of hot take that's genuinely good. I feel like now the other stuff was really kind of fraught. Like it felt really, um, I felt like there was a real agenda to it now that I, now that I hear like, to me, what sounds like a really, I mean, this person like makes money off mentoring too, right? But like, I feel like it's a really honest hot take, like the path. The path is a more, to me, the path seems a more genuine one. And it comes back to like my initial thoughts too about just like not capping yourself out. I mean, they picked like something really kind of niche with Ruby to start with, but like not, not capping yourself out. Genuinely pursuing goals like this. That was inspiring. I'm going to go like, you know, I'm going to go find a time to like, watch more of their stuff um wow yeah all right i'm probably gonna like end it there actually because i have achieved like literally oh well, not literally nothing i got a few names but i didn't get a huge value but that's okay i've got some courses i can maybe do other times um Maybe I can, like, you know, maybe I can, like, review some of these courses. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. At least I did find something, and I guess I got a bit of perspective. So maybe it wasn't such a bust. Um, but anyway, until next time.